Yes, this is John and Helen, today with John and Helen. Mm -hmm. And on the front burner, mm -hmm. like we told you earlier on, is a hot topic for the day. Don't you want to have children? Don't you want to have children? And like Helen said earlier on, our next guest is Dr. Toi Ajayi, a renowned obstetrician and gynecologist with over 20 years experience in the field. <laughs> she is a member of the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, United Kingdom, the European Society for Human Reproduction and Embryology, I had to take it easy on that word, mm -hmm. and the Association mm -hmm. of Fertility and Reproductive Health, Nigeria. She is the medical director of Wait For It, Bridge Clinic Fertility Center, and it's our honor and pleasure to welcome you today, madam, to Today with John and Helen. Welcome, Dr. Tui Ajayi. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, A John. Very big Thank welcome you. to you. A very big <laughs> welcome to you. I must say that you're someone I've always one longed to meet. One-on-one. One-on-one. On one. Because sometimes you're, you know, sometimes I want to believe that you ask yourself at work, am I playing God? Mm. <laughs> wow. Because of what you do, you okay. know. Uh, so okay. we will we will dive into the questions for we, there are a lot of questions, a lot of things we need to know about how to manage that question. Don't you want to have children? Now tell us what is infertility, okay. and are there different types? Absolutely. So infertility is basically if you're having a challenge in getting pregnant. So the definition is if you've been trying for at least 12 months, having regular unprotected sexual intercourse for 12 months, and you're not getting pregnant. So that's infertility. Yeah. And we have two types. There's primary and secondary. So primary is when you've never had a child before and are then having these challenges. Yeah. It's much less common in this part of the world, actually. Whereas secondary is when you've had a child or a pregnancy in the past, and then you have a delay and then getting and pregnant up. again. Yeah. And actually, that is a much more common um, thing that we see, especially here in Nigeria. Okay. And, you know, it's about 65% of women will actually be suffering from secondary infertility. So it's much more common. Okay. That's what we deal with more. Because yeah. you keep saying uh, it's more prevalent in this part of the world, it's more prevalent in Nigeria. Is there, is there a reason for that before the next question? Because yeah, that, that's, yeah, I'm yeah, curious about Absolutely, that. yeah. So um, this part of the world and developing countries generally, Okay. Unfortunately, so for women, for instance, um, we know that the biggest factor um, for secondary infertility is when your tubes are blocked. And that's usually because you've had untreated infections, okay. like sexually transmitted infections that have not been treated well. So, you know, in developing countries, obviously, you know, the struggle to access care early enough, the struggle to get the proper mm. treatment, you know, the struggle to have the proper surgery mm. if you have a problem. Mm. That then results in you having this sort of um, massive effect on your tubes. And without tubes, you're going to struggle to get pregnant. Oh, great. Now, so are there statistics on male and female infertility? Yeah. So the interesting thing, so, you know, I think, again, and I keep saying this, in our part of, in our part of the world, we always assume that it's all the woman's fault. And that's not fair because it's not true. It's not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the reality is actually that it's pretty much split quite evenly. Mm. So um, the m male infertility is about 30%. Female infertility, it's actually about 30% as well. So we, 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 we can't lean on... Uh, so you can't sort of push it on one person or the other. We can't lean on genetics like, oh, my grandfather before exactly. me had 80 children. Exactly, no. So, no. No, 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 you're on your own. Yeah, you're on your own. And then actually, we also have like, sometimes it's both partners' fault, so it could be the man and the woman together. Together, that okay. That accounts for about another 30%. And then a very small 10% is unexplained. That's much less common. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So as a, as a treatment expert in infertility mm -hmm. you know what are the most common challenges you face you know when you meet couples who are trying to conceive what are the yeah you touched on couple, one or yeah. two earlier on yeah i mean i think one of the big things that we see a lot is actually a delay in coming to get help all right mm -hmm. you know so you know a lot of you know we live in a you know we're very religious you know we faith is a huge part of our lives mm -hmm. you know so a lot of people maybe they've been praying and going to church for like mm -hmm. 20 years mm -hmm. And then they finally come and say, okay, I'm struggling, you know. And yeah. unfortunately, by the time they come and come, see us, you know, the major issue is that, you know, the woman is much older, you know. And we do know that, you know, once you're over the age of 35, fertility starts to drop drastically. You know, so if you're coming to us at 40, 41, 42, you know, it's so much more challenging because more often than not, we have to start talking to you about maybe using donor eggs because your own eggs are not a good quality. You know, mm. then that acceptance of that donor 
thing is that another concept, huge, that concept of not having your own gen mm, genetic mm, child mm. is a huge thing, you know. So, yes. you know, that delayed presentation just has a significant impact as well. Mm -hmm. And I think the second thing I want to just mention is also just misunderstanding. A lot of people don't even really understand, you know, how you get pregnant normally anyway, okay. you know, that there could be problems, that it could be me, it could be the man. So that is also something that impacts on, on you know, on how you present to the clinics as well. No, but be, be, before the next question, let me just, just to wrap up on this, this one. Yeah. It, where, where is the place of education you and know, information from you know? early on? Yeah, you know, like when because I, I as a boy, yes, I don't think I got. Mm. The, I don't know about the girls. Yeah. I went to a male <laughs> school. Mm. You know, I don't know if there was any. Well, you get education on reproductive issues, mm. but not on. And we did biology you know, yeah. and things, like, but not not on details yeah. about Everybody specific. Told me, yeah. Look, this yeah. is exactly. what happens yeah. when yeah. how yeah. exactly. And I agree. I mean, we, you know, in school we all did biology. Yeah. You know, we all had that very embarrassing biology class mm. where the teacher was talking about mm. men and women's bits yeah. and you were hiding your face and not really sure. wanting to listen. Yes. Um, but there's a big dearth of you know, proper, proper true education to understand you know, mm. natural conception fertility. So you know, organizations like us try and you know, bridge that gap by just putting out a lot of information yes. you know, on different platforms and so on. You know. But mm. yeah, I, I agree. There's a lot more that we can do to actually start a lot of this education yes. much, Early. much yes. earlier on. Yes. Much yes. earlier on. Yes. Yes. So having quite directed focus things like in secondary school, universities, mm -hmm. programs like that mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. In churches, in churches where people are going absolutely. for marriage counseling yeah, yeah. before that, that the pre-marriage counselor yeah. and all of that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so are fertility treatments applicable mm. to all infertility cases? So the answer is no, because sometimes you don't need anything too dramatic, you know? Sometimes you might need something as simple as just a bit of lifestyle modification. What do I mean by that? You know, weight is a big issue, okay? If you're mm -hmm. overweight, both the man and the woman actually, being overweight doesn't help your fertility, and it's not good for sperm, all right? So being at a healthy weight is good. Stopping smoking, you know, stopping taking drugs, you know, all the, stopping alcohol for the men, all these things could be just all you need actually to just have a bit of a better chance. Mm. Sometimes all you need is just a bit of hormonal manipulation, some simple medications, or even just what we call timed intercourse, where we just sort of monitor your cycle and tell you the right time to try naturally at home. Those mm. are the simple measures. Mm. But of course, that doesn't work for everybody. So upon investigation, some people actually need what we call advanced assisted reproductive techniques. That's your IVF, okay. your IUI. And these are all things where you have to be in a proper fertility center that's got a good quality system, a proper laboratory, so you can actually have these much more detailed and much more um, uh, technologically advanced um, processes. And IVF is essentially just putting an egg and a sperm together in a laboratory. Like you, make it, you make it sound so... I know, it sounds very... Yeah, but very sounds cool. so yeah. you said it when she came on at the beginning. She, sometimes you think she's playing God. You know, so if you have done this for as long as you have done, over yeah. 20 years, over 20 then years you would make it seem like... Yeah. I, I just want to quickly yeah. take you back, you know, because um, you talked about taking alcohol, you know, yes. getting, getting off alcohol, mm -hmm. you know, but a good, a good glass of wine after a lovely meal... That's fine. Yeah. That's good for you, know, actually. At room temperature. Nice. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. A good, yeah absolutely. A good, so a good Shiraz at room temperature what, what, is very good. What are the limits? <laughs> so, of course, you know, having alcohol in moderation, like everything, yes. is fine. But it's, the, it's when you drink to, the, to excess. To excess. Mm. That's when this can happen. Often, I mean. Regularly, regularly. drink to excess regularly. Yes. That's when you're going to have issues and, and, and impacts. On okay, earlier on we were talking about um, you don't wait until you get there to begin to look for solution. And we're looking at a situation where before the couples actually get married, why they're trying to get married. Um, what would you say at this point in time? Because you've seen a lot of these issues and we do know the harm it causes, yeah. you know, to the man and the woman and the extended family yeah. even so. Um, are there things that you, the couples will need to know and take into consideration, you know, when trying to get married, even before they get there? And I think, I think that's a really good question. So I think, again, you know, seeking information, so actually understanding, okay, we're going to start trying to have a baby maybe in a year or two after we get married. What do we need to know? You know, how does it actually work? What's the right timing? You know, when in my cycle do I need to do these things? You know, just to have that education. And then I think also there's lifestyle modification. So quit smoking, quit your drinking. If you're taking drugs or marijuana, stop all that stuff, you know. Get your weight under control. So these are things you can do prior to getting married. And I think very important as well, you can go and get like a little, what I call like a fertility checkup, all right? So you, it's like a little MOT. You know, so you can, yeah, you know, that's what, that's what I, I like, like it, like a little MOT for, you know, for, for the man and the woman. Yeah. So the man can check his, you know, his, his self and check his semen sample that 
everything is okay. Mm. The woman can check, she can have a scan to check her womb is fine. She can check her tubes, check her hormone status, you know. And this is a good thing to do um, as, a, as a sort of a fertility checkup ready. prior to even, so that you know, right, we've identified something. Should we start working on that actually even before mm. we get married or before mm. we start trying? So mm. I think those kind of checkups are very good. You know, we do those and, you know, we have a lot of traction because, you know, a lot of people just want to know their status. And yeah. alternatively, in some part of this country, I don't want to mention names, Perhaps that's why um, the family members insist that um, there's a trial and something yeah. happens before the church wedding or the traditional yeah. wedding. When you say a trial. There's something, yeah, yeah, there's like something a, on a the way. They know proof. that um, the bride is, <laughs> it, uh, is it, expecting. It, it's not peculiar to any... Some people, sometimes you want to do a road test. Yeah. You know. Mm. <laughs> so I suggest an MAT instead. <laughs> <laughs> so do the MOT checkup instead of instead yeah. of the true road test. That's yes. what we better. But you see, it's mm. often it's often so difficult for now it's clear that for men to to come out and yeah. you know it's difficult. Why is it why is it difficult for men to come out? By the way, why? Why don't we ask absolutely let's ask yeah. John. Okay, yeah. Asking, <laughs> We're asking yeah. you, why? John. As the only man on set. Because he's the only one here, I think it's, you know. I think it's a Talk mix a little of, bit uh, from your experience, yeah. you know. It's a mix it takes of, uh, longer for the guy to actually come than for the woman. Why why do you think so? I think, you know, from from experience, it, it's cultural. Okay. You know, it's cultural. I think in this part of the world it's definitely cultural because there's this, you know, we live in a very patriarchal society. Yeah. You know, mm. there's an assumption that there can never be anything wrong with the man. It must always be the woman. Yeah, it's all it's all on the woman. And that's again just due to ignorance and lack of proper education, education. and knowledge about yes. how conception actually works. Mm. You know. Mm. And it's a shame because the woman is put under so much pressure, like you say, like your earlier guest was talking about, you know, by the family and so on and so forth. Um, you know, and even trying to get her husband to come and get a yes, test so, yeah. so can be a it. huge source of friction mm. in, in, in relationships. You know, it, can, it can have a real toll. You know, and then even when the men do come up and maybe they find there's a significant problem, they might then ask you to even not tell their partner, which is unethical, and we don't do that. You know, mm. But you have to be, there are a lot of places that might who are, you know, who are not as ethical and practice deeply. So there are times when the man will go on his own yes. for, for a his check MOT. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And he finds out that whatever, and yeah. then he still says, don't, yeah. don't, yeah. don't let my wife know. Yeah. That's, mm. yeah. And that's, so the wife is still running from pillar to pole. Exactly. That's so she then spends another year just thinking, you know, what's going on. That, so, that you is know. huge. But like I say, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cultural thing that we need, to, we need to address. We need to educate people about it and just let them know that there's nothing, you know, there's nothing wrong with having challenges. There's nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. Three in ten couples in Nigeria have challenges conceiving. That's yeah. a reality. Mm -hmm. That's a burden. There's nothing Three wrong with ten. it. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. Could it, could it then be um, the stigma, you know, that's attached to infertility mm. especially in this part of part of the world you know um i think i i have a feeling that you want to be in self-denial is that you know it's gone beyond self-denial you want to deny, deny. <laughs> right you want to deny because you don't want it attached to you directly yeah. right yeah. and um i think they need help or we need help mm. because now we're looking more at the men Mm. Okay, we need help. Mm. What would your organization, I mean the Bridge Clinic for instance, and other, other clinics, such uh, uh, similar clinics, what would you, what would be your input in assisting people? We've talked about education. What, what, what would be your input to help people get out of this, this closet, yeah. so to speak? Yeah. So like I said, we, we've spoken about education, that's key. Um, and I think again, you know, having um, a lot of collaborations. So like we have a lot of collaborations with the churches. So going into the churches, you know, we know that that's a huge, where all our young couples are going into the churches together, and doing yeah. educationary programs and just, you know, explaining this is what it is. It's not a stigmatizing thing and so on. Mm. I think that's a huge thing. I think also collaborating with NGOs is another huge um, um, part as well, because through that, you know, a lot of people, you know, go to NGOs for help and support and just advice. So if we can also, we collaborate with NGOs um, and we use that platform to help couples and also just to educate as well about, you know, I think, I think we are a very closed things. society, mm -hmm. you know, where we don't, um, we're not, we're not, we don't find it easy to speak out. And that's where the issue, you know, starts. Now, fertility treatments, we know. Um, or we here, we're not sure, <laughs> are expensive. And um, consider to be um, a rich person's solution. 
Now, the issue at hand is not peculiar to only the rich people. So is there a cheaper option or way around it where the poorer ones who have this challenge also can access help and treatment? So I like that question because it's one that's always asked because you know, people just talk, talk about cost. But I think it's important to know that quality has a cost. And I'll say that again, quality has a cost to it. Mm -hmm. All right? So if you want good quality healthcare, it comes with a cost because we all know what goes into that. But at the end of the day, what, whether, whether rich or poor, what we want is results. Absolutely. Conception. Absolutely. But to get conception and results, you have to have quality. Now, we work in an unregulated um, specialty in this country. Okay. All right? So there's opportunity for all sorts of dubious mm. behavior, all sorts of false promises. Oh, come to my clinic, you'll pay you know, pittance, and I'll yeah. promise your pregnancy. Yeah. 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 You know, so people are drawn in by that, but then, like you say, the results, are they getting results? Quality has a cost. Now, um, options such as having like a CSR initiative with government hospitals, we have one of those. So that's how we help. That's how we reach um, those lower income couples who are mm. unable to perhaps um, not afford it. So I think a CSR initiative with a government hospital such as what we have with LASF, um, you know, we reach a lot of couples that way and just help those who might struggle otherwise. That's interesting. Mm. Well, we've been told we have uh, less than two minutes. Do you have another question for our job? I have. I have. I honestly... Please, just throw one in. Squeeze one in quickly. Now, we have concentrated a lot on our environment here, you know, and I think it would be unfair to compare our mindset to, you know... That, the Western world. To the, to, the West, to, the West, to the Western world. I agree, world. yes. Um... I don't know. How the minute do we, is running out. How do we get over this? How do we get over this? In this because environment. I think we really need to. You know, I think... I I'm think, looking at government intervention yeah, and all of yeah. that. I mean, again, it's, it's collaboration. Okay, so I think that's my word for the day. Collaboration is key. We're not good at collaborating. Could it be seen as a primary health issue or something? Yeah, I mean, I think it starts at primary health for the education factor. So you go there to... Primary health has have a burden to educate the masses, essentially, on the proper thing. Mm -hmm. But the collaboration with government, you know, PPPs and so on, that, that's really the way forward to ensure that everybody can be reached. Mm. Right. Okay. It, it's not captured in the N N NHF? The National Health Insurance Scheme, it's not captured in there, uh, is it? Only certain parts, not, not necessarily full. It's not fully not covered, full. but maybe investigations and so on. Yeah. So, you so HMOs also have something to do. Okay. <laughs> you know. All right. Thank you so much. Thank it's you so been, much for having it's me. Been, it's been like 25 minutes of like one hour. It's gone very quickly. Because we've got in so yes. many, so yes. much impact and um, you've given us some solution and some respite in a lot of the areas where we, we, we were not too sure before you came on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Brian. And um, we wish you the very best and we thank you for the enormous job that you're doing and bringing happiness and bringing meaning back to lots of families who before they met you or came to your clinic, thought that um, the whole world was on their shoulders. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Ella. you for Thank coming. You, John. Thanks so much. All right. Okay, we're moving on. This is um, Today with John and Helen. And um, we've had two guests so far. You know, after now, we will have our wellness and fitness presenter. Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Oh, Tomo. Yes. <laughs> and you know, Pharaoh's segment is something that we all look forward to. I always look forward on to. On this issue. Yes, I always do. Yes. I always do. So, don't go away. Stay with us. Pharaoh will be back with her guest on the lifestyle and wellness segment in just a moment. <laughs>